What's going on guys, it is Straw High Goofy with another review for you guys and today we're going to be talking about the long anticipated film from Marvel Studios and that is called The Eternals. You hear that? Eternals Assemble. Hello. Hey, who's your gardener? Now, in case you don't know, the Eternals follows a group of immortal beings created by the Celestials to come to Earth and protect the humans from this evil race called the Deviants. It turns out this group has been alive on the planet for thousands of years, which means they've seen the Battle of New York, they've seen the battle against Thanos, they've pretty much seen Hydra, they've seen it all, and they just decided to kick back. But it's fine. Like, the movie is meant to explain all of that and are these answers satisfactory does it make sense we're gonna get into it so make sure you like comment and subscribe for the algorithm it helps out a lot and if you want to see me uh, make more videos or find more of my videos that way you'll get notified for all those type of things first thing off the top of my head i just want to say that i really like the eternals but at the end of the day it was kind of disappointing and i'll tell you why so when the when the eternals trailer came out i was really excited it was one of my most anticipated films for me of the year because it just seemed to be different and when it comes to the mcu like uh superhero fatigue is a very 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 real thing and we're getting so much mcu content and you start to notice now more than ever that it's starting to fall into a formula where you have whatever the film is whether it's black panther whether it's shang chi whether it's WandaVision, it seems to do something very interesting in the opening and towards the middle, but then towards the end, these movies tend to, and TV shows, I guess, tend to do these like big budget CGI punch em ups or shoot em ups action, whatever, right? With big, heavy, heavy, heavy CG. Now, The Eternals, from the trailer, it looked like it was different because not only is it directed by the amazing Chloe Zhao, amazing Chloe Zhao, I can't talk tonight, uh, the amazing Chloe Zhao who directed Nomadland. And that movie was very intimate, but it still felt uh, very big when it comes to capturing the human experience. I th it's easy to see her apply that uh, sensibility to this film just from the trailer alone, right? There's beautiful shots. The scale looks amazing, but it also looks it also looked to tackle the kind of like human side of immortal beings, which is something I always found very interesting, right? Because when you are alive for thousands of years, then, you know, what does that do when you're pretty much being assimilated to the human way of life, right? But at the same time, you're still kind of detached in a way because you've been alive for that long and people have gone, people have uh, came. And it's it's just a really interesting concept to me. So seeing that from the trailer, I was really excited to see what they were going to do. And for the most part, they do it. Like this film is more of a character study more than anything. And it's really long. Like I'm not going to like lie. I think it's like one of the longest MCU films. I think it might be the longest MCU films like right under uh, Avengers Endgame. It's about, it clocks in at about two hours and 36 minutes, probably including credits. And it just, it at times you're watching the clock. Like, I'm just going to be, at times you are watching the clock. But it just, it just really feels like a film that really wants to hone in on its characters and pretty much like the human condition, if you will. Like, there are a ton of characters. You have 10 Eternals. And you also have uh, Kit Harington, who plays the Black Knight. He's on there as IMDb. <laughs> So it's kind of weird. Like that's why I don't look at IMDb because you look at the you look at the uh the casting and sometimes people who are casted aren't there but then sometimes they're cast as like a spoiler I guess. So but uh as we, if you read comic books and if you read the headlines you'll know that Kit Harrington plays a man who eventually becomes a Black Knight in the MCU. Will he become the Black Knight in the movie? I'm not going to say. But <laughs> but pretty much Kit Harrington is there. You have the 10 Eternals and it's just a lot to juggle in one movie. But like I said, this is more of a character study more than everything else, which means this film is slower than a lot of MCU films. A lot of MCU films get going really quick where the Eternals wants to let you know, like, what were the Eternals doing? Not only uh, the couple thousand years beforehand, 400 years beforehand, but what are they doing today? What What is the current conflict today? And then it uses flashbacks to tell you like what they've been through and kind of like their bond and things of that sort but then those flashbacks are usually used for kind of character development moments and heavy exposition there's a lot of exposition in this movie there there's a lot of times where the movie just stops like everything just stops completely and there's and they're explaining like oh yes this is why you were created oh yes this is why uh this character the way they they are and it's like 
there are better ways to kind of do that. And I feel like the movie, since it is so big, since it is so huge in scale and uh, these characters are kind of like, you know, detached from everything else, then I guess you're going to have to do that. But there I felt like are more creative ways to do that. Like, obviously, like Lord of the Rings is probably like the gold standard of that. Right. Like and Lord of the Rings, there aren't many flashbacks, if I don't remember. But this movie uses a lot of flashbacks, which are necessary, but it's funny when you go to the flashback and then that flashback has exposition and then you go to the present and then there's a exposition in the present and it's just, it it makes the movie runtime just feel longer than it needs to be. So it, it, when it came to that, it was just kind of disappointing for me because obviously we, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of characters to juggle. I would like to see those type of things. I just wish that it could have been executed in a different way. But I think the strongest point of the Eternals is the characters. And and that's what Chloe Zhao gets right. It's the scale and it's the characters. Everything else outside of that, like the pacing and the, the villains and things of that sort, not as strong, but the characters are the heart and soul of this movie and it's funny because it's 10 like I said it's 10 characters but it still manages to make you feel and get attached to all 10 characters I don't think there's really any weak link in the Eternals group and seeing them and seeing kind of like their family bond and seeing like how they pretty much come together how they work as a dynamic how they fight how they just sit around and talk those were my favorite scenes the humor doesn't feel forced it feels very natural and each eternal has kind of like their own way of dealing or in some case coping with the fact that they are as old as they are and you know the things that they've seen and the things that they've done or could have done and again that is the most interesting part of the movie is just seeing these characters grapple with their immortality and their like long, long lives and the people that they've seen and the people that they lost. And that right there is just something that I wish could have been cut down (laughs) into something, you know, just a little bit more accessible, uh, similar to how Nomadland was. And again, Nomadland is one of those Oscar films that like, you know, you probably only see like two or three times and then, you know, because it's long and it's a grueling process and it takes a lot out of you. Eternals feels like that, but then like you're also waiting for the Marvel stuff to happen. And then the Marvel stuff happens and it almost feels a little jarring, you know, especially since they don't really explain their powers that much. They just explain that they're Eternals, the Celestials created them, imbued them with this and Pew pew, you know. So now let's get into some of my favorite characters. One of my favorite characters is Druig. Druig is played by Barry. I'm gonna mess up this name. Hold up. <laughs> Kyogen, 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 Kyogen. Sorry. He was one of the Eternals that I was like really attached to. He just seemed like of a different vibe than the rest of the Eternals. Like he seemed, hey baby, okay. what you doing? Okay. Like I said, you gotta wait. Okay. Okay. My daughter scared me. But yeah, he just seemed like a different vibe from the rest of the Eternals. Like, not only did he seem kind of cooler, but he kind of just seemed hip to, like, what was going on. He kind of had, like, his own agency within the group. Uh, He, again, I not spoiling anything but his powers is pretty much he can like mind control and make people do what he wants them to do but his whole thing is you know i can do these things but you know i'm told not to interfere those type of things so that's like a very like interesting concept between him he also wears a really cool jacket like he also wears a really cool jacket makari is also a big standout like i wish there was more of her i feel like she probably got less of the screen time when it comes to uh the rest of the group but when i when she was whenever she was on screen I was in for it. Cersei, but played by Gemma Chan, is amazing. She's awesome. One of the big standouts as well is Kingo. Kingo is a really bit funny character. He, he's, I think he might be the comedic relief of the group now that I think about it. But uh, he also like gets a lot of opportunities to take on those serious moments and those more somber moments and also grapple with the life that he's lived as well. So he's not just com- uh, comedic timing. But he's a lot more than that, which I really appreciate. Richard Madden is Icarus. A lot of people have been calling him Superman because obviously he's flying around shooting lasers at his eyes with super strength. Uh, people keep asking me, is he really just another Superman clone? And I don't really think he is. I don't really think he is. I think he's a clone of another character. Um, but me, if I say anything else, it's probably going to be spoiling something. So not Superman someone else but we'll talk about that in a spoiler review one thing i gotta say is the villain crow who's like the head deviant who he's whack (laughs) like i'm trying to like come like there's no other thing to say he's whack like honest i really feel like you could have did the whole movie without crow and it would have been fine i just feel like they made crow in the put crow in the movie because you know he's part of the eternals mythos and you gotta do it 
but honestly, you didn't have to, and and not even in that way. And I could tell, like maybe Chloe tried to do something with this character, but it just felt like there's a lot that was left on the cutting room floor. It just felt like there was a whole nother subplot that we're missing when it came to that character. That by the time you know he is defeated. It just, it just, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. But honestly, all in all, guys, like, The Eternals is a pretty decent MCU film. Um, it, 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 it struggles from being too big for itself. It struggles with carrying these, like, super heavy concepts while still doing the MCU thing. You know what I'm talking about. But uh, it's, it's a good film. I really dug it. A lot of people picked up on the fact that uh, I wasn't as excited when I walked out when I gave my initial reactions after the premiere. But it still rocks like it's still like honestly it's one of those again it's one of those films that's more of an introspective character study and so that means walking out of a very long movie thinking i don't know if i really like that and then thinking about it and then thinking back on scenes and then you realize oh okay there was some good stuff in the movie it's just you know it's just very different very long but uh, if you go into it just expecting to get great character development, great character moments, and pretty interesting questions about uh, these immortal beings in the MCU and, like, what would you do if you were in that situation, then you're going to have a good time. Uh, so I wouldn't expect, like, a, uh, a Shang-Chi or Avengers Endgame or just even, not even the first Avengers type stuff. Uh, I would expect pretty much a Chloe Zhao-directed character study so that is it are you guys gonna see the eternals are you excited uh who is your favorite character let me know in the comments down below and then once again make sure you like comment and subscribe uh but thank you so much guys for watching the video and uh, i hope to make more reviews for you guys in the future you guys take care